I'd always wrap up the podcast with four final questions, rounding the bases. They could be anything. So we'll start with this. I, I was just struck, almost taking me back to time at the, the journey that a young Harry Truman would make to, to be courting, I believe, his future wife. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and if you're you know, from Kansas City, you'll, you'll be able to understand the landscape. But, but picture wherever you're at, wherever you live, uh, a, a journey, like a, what, a day long journey to get, I don't know what it was, 30 miles away or whatever mm-hmm. it was. What was, what was that courtship and those, those, those travel times and, and journey like for him? Well, in his twenties, when he was working on the farm down in Grandview, they had gone to high school, they'd gone to school. They knew one another from, from here, but he was obviously interested in, in, in more than just that passing friendship. So he, he would ride the train from Grandview up into Kansas City and then change and have a spur out this way. And he, fortunately for him, he had uh, uh, relatives that lived right across the street from the Wallaces. And so there's the very famous episode when Mrs. Wallace had baked a cake and taken it across the street and they needed to take that cake plate back uh, across the street. And so Harry just about knocked his cousins down to get to that plate so he could be the one to take it across the street and, uh, and, and return that to the Wallaces. And, have a chance to visit with Bess at that at that moment. So no, he he definitely uh, paid his dues, put in his effort in in terms of uh, trying to get to get to her. All right. Second question as we round the bases. One of my favorite exhibits at all the stadiums I get to go to is in D.C. where the Nationals play, and the Royals don't get there much because of interleague. But we're we're maybe there every six years on average, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And and so you sort of walk out uh, to the to the fancy seats behind home plate, and they have this wall with with all the presidents that have thrown up first pitches and all of that type yeah. of stuff. Uh, it's my segue into what what was Truman's interest in baseball. Well, he I I don't know. I mean, Truman was a uh, uh, I think he was just interested in people. He mm-hmm. was just interested in in society. He was very fraternal. Like I mean, he was a joiner. He would have joined every church he ever stepped foot in. He would have joined every fraternal organization he could. He joined several, um, but he just loved being around people. And where, where my understanding from some of the staff here is that it was actually really Bess who was the big baseball really? fan. I mean, Harry Harry enjoyed it too. But as far as going to those games, especially in D.C. and then here, um, that was really more of a Bess thing. Interesting. But um, no, I think he just enjoyed being around people. I think he appreciated the artfulness, you know, the effort of what it took to do things well. And so when people were doing that well, I think he was there and supported. All right. Third question as we round the base. This is, this is always one of my favorite questions for anyone that is a, a, an expert in their field or someone that gets just a chance to see everything that we don't get a chance to see. Mm-hmm. You have access to all of this every day. What's on the walls? What's in the displays? What, what is downstairs or wherever you, you, you keep the stuff that you keep? What was that one discovery, maybe not a discovery, that you saw something and you said, oh, my goodness, I can't believe this, something that really mm-hmm. moved you? Well, I think, I think one of the things that, that comes to mind is when we were putting the exhibit together, we had to decide how to handle the atomic bomb. Mm. You, you've got to be sensitive to it. I mean, a lot of people died, but you've also got to, I mean, you can't talk about Harry Truman and not talk about the bomb. So how are you going to handle that moment? And I think what our team came up with is absolutely brilliant. We have one of my favorite artifacts in the in mm. our collection is the safety plug that was in the bomb yeah. that went off over Nagasaki, and and right next to that, paired with that item, is a little paper crane that was folded by a little girl who was two years old when the bombs went off. She died ten years later of radiation induced mm. leukemia, and her brother, who was four at the time, uh, came here when when he was. Uh, uh, I mean, an older man, obviously, and, and came here and gave us a gift of that one of the final cranes that she folded in, in her in her mm-hmm. life before she died. And and that to me, the trigger of the atomic age and the symbol of peace that came out of that horrific event, pairing those together, I think, is one of those aha moments that really it tells a great story to our public. It's beautiful display to very emotional to, to yeah, walk in there and, and almost put yourself back in the shoes of that little girl. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What I mean, a little, a little kid, you know, imagine, imagine what that would be mm. to see your city leveled and, yeah. and to survive that. Yeah. Think about that a lot right now, again, with what's yeah, going on absolutely. with Ukraine. So my final question, the walk-off is, and I, I, I feel lucky in my world of sports and even motivational speaking and all that, I, I get to avoid politics. Doesn't mean I don't pay attention to it. Doesn't mean I don't have opinions. Right. Mine just don't matter. And I don't want them to matter. I've, I've got a, a full 
uh, baseball audience that that is going to like the Royals or on any given night, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, right. And and so it doesn't matter which side you're on yeah. and, and, and doesn't matter which side I'm on. But I've thought about this a lot. And, and I think part of why we we love to look back at a Harry Truman is is we wish you sort of alluded to this before that that we had someone like that now that's not an indictment on one side it's probably an indictment on all sides at this it, point it right i'm being sure. very political i guess but but i i wonder and this is just a guess on your part what what he would think of this day and age of contentiousness i think it would be very very foreign to him mm -hmm. because i think the idea that your motivation is just simply to trip up the other side he never operated that way. I mean, he reached across the aisle. He was, he was, and now he disagreed and, and he was very partisan. I mean, he was very uh, animated about how, what he believed and how he believed it. And you know, that do nothing 80th Republican Congress. I mean, he could take it to him for sure, but he never let a political difference become a, a personal animus, mm. a personal division. I mean, he worked with, with Vandenberg. He worked with people on the other side of the aisle. And he was able to uh, forge some compromises. I mean, and that's the thing that is missing now. And I think from Truman and, and back to the founders, you know, every word in the Constitution is the product of a compromise. Every treaty up to that point is, is you know, it, it's all, nobody gets what they want 100% of the time, ever. Mm -hmm. And yet we somehow think today that we have to. If we compromise, we, we've given in in some way. So I think that Truman, you know, it's, I, I, it's, I say this as my sort of standard line, it's a great time to be in the Truman business because you can't offend anybody. Mm. I have personally had Madeleine Albright and Dick Cheney both tell me, you've got a great legacy to represent. And, you know, you couldn't find two people, you know, on different sides of a lot of other, you know, issues like they are, but, but they all admire Harry Truman, Colin Powell, George Bush, but on the other side, Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, these people, mm all respect and revere Harry Truman. And it's not because of his ideology. It's not because of what he believed or how the policies that he promoted. It's because of the way he led. Yeah. It's the integrity that he brought to the highest office in the land. And that integrity is, is what we miss. Yeah, I, I suspect that Cheney, Bush weren't saying the positive things about him because of his policies, it was because no. of the well, leadership. Although in those days, the Republican Party was more the isolationist yeah. party. And of course, that that is quickly changing even in our own time. Yeah. I mean, within one presidential administration, we've seen a, a real change in the attitudes about foreign policy compared to certainly the the, the parties that I knew growing up, yeah. growing up are, are very, very different. And there's a pendulum to that, I suppose. I, per, perhaps, right. but it but it's um, the celerity with which that that swing has taken place yeah. is uh, is I think shocking to any of us that are watching it. It is. Well, better times in the past, which yeah. yes, good to be in the Truman business and and good to see the library reemerging from the pandemic better, bigger, better than ever before. Um, I, I know with the hours still being, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say hit and miss, but, but the things are constantly changing and they'll change again. If people are listening to this podcast in a different year, different month, whatever yeah. it is, easiest way I would imagine to go to the website. Go and to the website. Out trumanlibrary.gov and uh, we'll have our hours posted uh, we will certainly have more hours uh, than we have today by the time this airs and uh, no honestly if you haven't seen us lately you haven't seen us yeah uh, it's a brand new institution that's been reimagined not just remodeled this isn't a simple changing of the carpets and the labels it's been reimagined reconsidered reconstructed from the ground up it's it is uh, unlike anything you've ever seen i'm biased uh, there's nothing like it in the presidential library system. It is unique. Uh, biased for a good reason. I can attest to that. It is absolutely a spectacular experience and one that I am looking forward to coming back to multiple times, bring family, friends, all of that. And so the Truman Library, trumanlibrary.gov. Kurt, thanks for the, the historical, the history lesson, as well as the perspective on leadership, even a little bit of baseball in there. I really appreciate you spending time. Thank you very much. Good to be with thanks, you. Thanks, Kurt.